Contradiction Speech Against Itself was uh, initially a performance I was doing, a kind of monologue. Um, and it was really made in response to uh, a kind of post Edward Snowden moment where we had the clearest idea that there was a complete link between free speech and self surveillance. That we understood that kind of free speech is a trap. And at that point, I started to look at other types of ways in which and laws which govern our voice and um, and in the kind of failure of and, and, in, and in the lack of silence that was generated in that time in the total over speaking I came to this juridical and theological concept of taqiyya at that same time uh, taqiyya had entered the news because it was at the moment when Jabhat al-Nusra were con doing forced conversions of the Druze minority in Idlib in north of Syria and there was a lot of debate whether those conversions were real or whether those people uh, who are theologically very um, attached to the concept of taqiyya were just performing the role for the, for the, uh, for the conversion. So uh, what is taqiyya? Taqiyya is um, defined by uh, a theological scholar that I speak to and I, I, I'm in dialogue with in the work uh, um, as speaking at the readiness of the other to listen. Um, and it's most often misunderstood as the right to lie. Um, in its most basic form, it is that, because it comes from uh, uh, Islamic jurisdiction that uh, uh, initially it can only be uh, uh, evoked uh, when you're under threat of your life. Um, but later, as the more esoteric sects of Islam develop um, through uh, Shi'ism and uh, then later into Druze uh, theology um, through Ismaili and, and, and those, uh, those paths of, of thought and epistemology, the concepts start to be understood slightly differently as something like um, the truth is only really for you and yourself alone. And everything else is a social construct. And that even to speak is to lie itself. Because we speak so differently to whoever we're speaking to that we recreate ourselves in every moment that we speak. So right now I'm speaking to you in a very different way as I was speaking half an hour before to Agatha in my studio. Right. So this idea that we constantly self-construct ourselves was so interesting for me because it's the exact opposite of how in the West they think about the voice, which is the ultimate bearer of truth, right? That if you stand and you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth, that happen on your voice. And the voice is understood as really the thing through which you negotiate legal procedure and really the most serious moments of truth have to be given orally and in the voice. So I was really interested in these uh, distinctions between the conceptions of the human voice. One that say actually to speak is to lie and the other which is to say that the voice is the only source of truth or the most fundamental one. So I was really interested in this um, tension and so I began to uh, start a work that told the story of new technologies that were being developed at the time um, this moment, as I said, this kind of post Snowden moment, and at this moment where Taqiyya had entered again, the kind of popular mainstream was circulating on Twitter a lot because of these mass conversions of the Druze in Jabhat al-Nusra. So later it developed into a two-channel video installation, which is trying to um, simulate an experience for the audience of being in that performance. But in this context of the installation, it's really made for one person at a time. So I'm really speaking to, to one person rather than a room full of people. And that's really the biggest distinction in the, in the installation from the performance. Um, and uh, again, what I'm trying to do is give this feeling that it's not really only one. It's one character. It's me doing the talking but it's many voices that are being performed at one time. And I think that's really what I'm trying to do with the installation is capture that feeling that through in one person there's this multitude of voices. The way the installation and the performance work is they both heavily rely on this uh, technology called the te um, presidential teleprompter. And that was something that's really a kind of Obama era 
device. It's been used many times before that, but it started to circulate a lot at that time. And it's basically a teleprompter where you have a piece of reflective glass that's totally transparent, and you read a text that's being projected onto the glass. Um, and it's this idea that, of course, what Obama was credited with is a very kind of like real talk. He didn't feel prepared because he could look people in the eyes as he was delivering his speeches. And of course, he was a great orator, but he was always reading, right? So I was kind of interested with, with this technology because on the one hand, it's sort of trying to, to build greater transparency between you and the audience. But the other side with its kind of reflections and with the text happening underneath the surface of what you can see as an audience, you understand that it's also duplicitous. So it's a technology that embodied a lot of the things I was talking about that have to do with public speech and lying and, and all those questions um, and the politics of the voice. So I use that. That's really, that's really one of the performers in the work. I'm performing behind that. And in the installation, I turn it round. So actually, you are the one uh, looking at the teleprompter and reading off the glass. You, you, the only way you can experience the work is actually through that glass onto uh, the, the second channel of the video behind it. So you have these two layers. Um, and instead of me being the one who can only read the thing in the performance, you're actually in the position where you kind of uh, at the um, at the podium, if you want. Why it was both a performance and an installation, or first a performance and then an installation? Um, I mean, I think it's about. I think I always saw them existing together, um, and uh, I've done performances where the where I use just the technology that's available in the installation, and then that's kind of remained for the perform for the installation afterwards after the performance is finished. Um, but I think it's just about trying to find a way in which those ideas could be made manifest in a way where I wasn't also present. I think it's really about the performance of the of the person before you and the body. But I really tried to use this device and this technology in the work to make you always feel that there is somehow a performer there and that also your, your own self implicated within of that work because you are kind of in the position of uh, having it just done for you, this one monologue, um, and it's a very kind of one-to-one -one experience. So um, there's a great distinction in experiencing both works, but I think both of them are trying to get at a sense of, of performance in different ways. The benefit of the installation version is, on the one hand, the device, the teleprompter, plays more of a central role than it does in the performance. You could kind of miss that point of the performance, or you could see it as a prop, whereas here it's really a, it is the central character. Um, and then the other advantage of the installation over the performance is that you can have this very careful ability to play with sounds and like I said it's it's only for one person so one person has the headphones um, and it's really only one single perspective as well because only one person can look through the glass at a time right because it's made for giving a speech rather than receiving information um, and uh, so um, you can work very carefully both on the way that images are kind of projected onto the glass the overlay of things um, the ways in which sound play with the image and, and vice versa in ways that are much more acute. Uh, with the performance, of course, there's an element which is live and which is a bit more chaotic and happening and subject to my mood on that day, <laughs> which also has another um, uh, role to play. But uh, in the installation, it's very precise what I'm trying to do to the listener.